Hey, well, welcome to the watch list. I am so excited, not just because of this film. I mean, this Civil War has to be one of the most talked about films kind of coming out recently in cinemas. Can't wait to talk about it. Anyway, so Civil War, it's in the near future. It's a team of journalists traveling across the United States during a rapidly escalating, multi-factioned Second American Civil War that has engulfed really the whole nation. Does that kind of give it to us as far as what, what we're talking about here? Well, it explains um, the storyline, Russ, but in no way gives any suggestion of just how incredible this work of art is. It's a five stars for me, Russ, straight out the gates. Like, I, this is wow. one of the best films that I've seen for yonks. I, it still resonates with me. I was so disturbed and engrossed and also felt judged by the movie. That, for reasons that we'll get on to, but I just think Civil War, in short, is amazing. And I, I look forward to kind of talking to you about it, too, because, I mean, this is about a second American Civil War. But yet, so as an American, somebody who comes from an American heritage and background, there were definitely some scenes that had quite an impact on me. I, I honestly, I went into this film not thinking I was going to like it. I thought that what, the statement it was going to make or what, the political structure and all the different things going on in the world, that it was going to be saying something that I did not want to necessarily see. But I agree with you, Ben. This was an amazing film, great craft, and then on top of it, it really think it was more of a cautionary tale for all of us. It's not just for Americans, but for all of us in so many ways. But I'd love to know, what is it about this film that really, that you loved? I mean, what was it that really grabbed you, first of all, especially somebody coming from outside of America? Civil War doesn't get bogged down in some of the things that you just mentioned about political or even social turmoil right now. Instead, it just launches off the kind of terrifying prospect that America, a Western world powerhouse, could implode into civil war, which I think plenty of people have sadly been predicting for some time. And the same sort of scenario could happen in Australia if there are enough factions fighting against each other. So one of the best things for me, Russ, about civil war is the fact that it wasn't so timely, it wasn't so anchored in political movements or social stuff right now. Instead, it just took this idea and ran with it. And one of the judgy things about it for me is, and I don't think the movie's trying to stand there and preach at me. I think it's holding a mirror up to myself. One of the things that I was struck by is this film I was more engaged by and even uh, compassionate towards than other situations in war-torn areas around the world that don't look as much like Australia. There's right. a lot about America that looks like Australia. And seeing a civil war in that kind of scenario, I felt awful about all the other actual civil wars going on all around the world that I can feel compa compassion fatigue about. I can just be like, go. well, that happens over there. But civil war, one of its master strokes is to say, this could happen anywhere. And this is about people. This is about humanity basically fighting against humanity. It's not America specific. There are things about it that are, yeah. but that's, I'm with you on its universal statement. I'm amazed there are so many reviewers that are having a go at the film and saying it should have been anchored more in the politics right. of now. I think they've missed the point. Yeah, exactly. I think, because actually that's the brilliance of this film. That's what it really grabbed me was the fact that he just cut this amazing line that it didn't come off as a red state, blue state thing. It didn't come off as a, a, a racial divide, which many times can actually happen in the kind of the American kind of context. And so within that, I just found that he really just kind of cut this great line. It did, I mean, I will have to say, uh, coming from an American background, there were some moments that really kind of showed me, I'm like, wow, I didn't realize, I forgot how patriotic our nation is, but also even I was, and that some of the scenes, it's still did definitely have a, an American feel to it. Which um, it moments, quite, Russ? Oh, definitely. Well, not to spoil it for people, but r right out of the gate, the first scene where they have oh. this protest that was going on, and there's this scene with this young woman with a flag that just, it just knocked me off of my seat the minute it happened as you see this flag run by, and then you see what, the, what occurs after that. I found that these were scenes that just really grabbed me as um, from an American standpoint, but then also it kind of grabbed me from a, yeah, how would you respond, whatever country you may be in, when you're in the middle of it? Would you be a part of it? Would you want to be making a difference within it? Or would you just kind of go, well, it doesn't affect me, so I'm just going to kind of pull away and not do anything? 
And Russ, we haven't even really talked about the cast yet. We haven't talked about (laughs) the style of filmmaking in this. You've contrasted it real briefly there with this is not uh, end of the world uh, blockbuster like Independence Day was. This is more like a stylized but realistic war movie. But even that, I I think, does it a bit of a disservice. It does. But some of the, the, the filmmaking techniques, before we ever get onto the cast and also the characters they're playing, the filmmaking techniques, that opening sequence you mentioned, the sound design, which continues on through the film, is an assault on the senses. But one of the best things about it, I found some of the choices of music that were used, you get this amazing contrast of something that's intense and kind of shocking to your core. At the same time, there's almost an element of fun and funk about right. the music that's playing. Totally. And I think that's meant to jar us into how we're entertained as moviegoers by warfare. Right. One of the judgy things again about Civil War, at least I was feeling judged, is the voyeurism and the spectator oh, nature that we yeah. can bring to this kind of movie, often when it's about a war from a long time ago or from a part of the world that just doesn't connect with us as much as let's say America does to Australian audiences. Which brings us then to the characters in the film, and as you mentioned, following a bunch of photojournalists and journalists across the country. But that was a masterstroke, I thought, of bringing people who spectate on and record war. And as Kirsten Dunst's character in the film says, we record so other people will ask. What they're doing at that point is distancing themselves from what's actually going on, not really taking a stand, instead reporting on it and bringing it to everybody else so they can come to their own conclusions. That's a fair enough statement. But what Civil War is also raising is the desensitizing nature of spectating on any kind of conflict and what that does to you as a human. And the cast, I thought, did a tremendous job, even with some of the, you know, coincidences and some of the unbelievable stuff that can happen, particularly towards the end. But by that stage, I didn't care because I was so engrossed exactly. by Kirsten Dutz. Her um, lead character is fantastic. That the, the the arc that her character follows is totally predictable, but in an awesome way of someone who is so hard bitten and so she did such a great job of looking battle hardened and weary, and yet her soul kind of reviving through the film in a mentor relationship she has with a young photographer. That's going on against this backdrop of war. And I thought all of those things came together to actually make me feel as an audience member that on the one hand, I am a cold-hearted spectator. On the other hand, am I actually going to revive my soul to feel something, not for just the people in this movie, but for people around the world who are encountering civil war? Just this movie, Russ, it it still haunts me and it will for a long time. I'm going to have to say... My favorite character was only in the movie for less than five minutes, but he wasn't even an appealing character. But I'm going to see Jesse Plemons, uh, his character and his role and just his question were probably kind of the key component in the turning moment in the whole film and in in the sense of him just asking, so what kind of American are you? And wow, that just goes straight to identity. And it goes to, there's a, it's a lose-lose proposition the minute you ask it because you're going, I can't answer this without somehow dividing the room. You're picking up on a really great moment in Civil War that encapsulates just how sophisticated this film is. And everybody else saying that it's not, they're wrong. Russ, they're wrong. Well, see, and the thing is, that also even for what we do here at the watch list and putting, lens, uh, putting film through the lens of faith, that... What that does is that it goes beyond just the what, what kind of American are you, but it also really goes to the deeper question of who our identity, who how we identify ourselves. If you were put in that situation, who what how would you answer? And looking at who, how do you identify? And so how really so many of the things in our society fall short after a while. But if you if you look at God as the rock, and also be able to look at how you build identify in that front, even though it can still divide the room, it still gives you something to really be able to stand on. Um, and then also this this whole film, it completely threw away everything that most people put their trust in. I mean, being government or other people or organizations or law enforcement. And so who can you trust? And so really looking at that and looking at the big picture of what this really has to say about our faith, as well as what we believe in and what we put our trust in. And so I, I mean, this film just 
goes on for days. I mean, this is more than just one podcast of discussion, but I think it just opens up the conversation about so many different other areas. And I really, I'm just thankful I actually got to see it and I'm looking forward to kind of talking about it more. What, uh, any other any other thoughts about the film that you wanted to add in, Ben? Just that justice is an undercurrent flowing through the film and right. what that means, what that looks like, what kind of lengths you'll go to, who's going to decide what side someone is on and the consequences thereof. And plenty of films do this, Russ, depict humanity and often at its worst. And Civil War is one of those, but it is one that resonates in terms of the value of the human life. And a lot is said in the Bible and among Christian circles about People, everybody being created in the image of God and how that is a great, not just a leveler, but the value of an individual human life is just inherent in being created by God. Civil War reminded me of that. And as you see people, many of which at their worst, what's lacking in a lot of it, but it does flicker at different points, is just this very simple equation of every single human life, irrespective of what country you come from, irrespective of what time you were born in, all those sorts of things, you are valuable. And I found Civil War another shocking and blunt reminder to go back and think about that. So I'm really glad that the politics and the race and the social stuff didn't get in the way. It, for me, just reminded me of driving back to the very simple truth that every single life is valuable and if we actually live by that what difference would that make russ in our world and you find the answers well i mean and and even though the movie funny enough also doesn't really bring in the whole faith element i mean there's different discussions of god and different discussions of prayer but really it's pretty there isn't really any direct correlation to it but yet for me coming away at the end it's hard not to look at your faith what you believe in, who you're talking about, but also how we treat one another. I mean, that was the hardest right thing for me as coming from an American position, watching fellow Americans doing what they were doing to one another. And, you, you know, almost doing it like, you know, why? so why are you shooting at this person? Because they're shooting at me. You know, I mean, it's like when, what? You know, like, how, how can we live that way? But, I mean, it is a great film. And I, I'm with you 100% that I, I can't imagine anybody not enjoying this film. But I'm really glad that we were able to do that. So, I mean, so I, I guess, I mean, the big question we always ask at the end of the podcast is, would you put this on the watch list? I think it's, the answer is pretty obvious. I, I would have thought so. I would hope so by now, Russ. It, <laughs> it is and will be to stay forever. It's definitely a mature film. There's a lot of shocking, oh, yeah. confronting it's images. It's called Civil War. You see it depicted. Some of the early just oh scenes the, of, of... From the opening. <laughs> oh. Yes, so it's really going to like um, shock people. It won't be for everybody, but uh, when you do see it and if you can stomach what's going on, what you are left with, even in just the brief conversation we've had here, Russ, should indicate the, the depth and the layers that are going on in this film that, that I think will resound for a long time after. And, and, and I think that one of the things that really kind of stood out to me is also Alex Garland is just a great director. Because Ex Machina was probably, has been one of my favorite films over the last 10 years. And it is a, an amazing depiction of kind of the human, um, kind of the, the fall of humanity in so many different ways. But this film, next level, I mean, Alex just did a great job. And I think that it's worthwhile getting out to see. I think everyone will have a different viewpoint on it. And I think you almost have to see it more than once to be able to really appreciate it. And, but even though it's really be hard, I don't know if I always have a hard time going in and seeing this again, just knowing what's coming, but it is worthwhile seeing and it definitely goes on my watch list. So, um, so thanks, Ben. Thanks so much. And I, I mean, I want, I wish the conversation could go on longer, but we're going to have to cut it this, cut this close at, at this point. So this is Russ Matthews and Ben McKeckin signing off from the watch list. Make sure you subscribe today. Make sure you check out the reviews at Real Dialogue. That's R-E-E-L dialogue.com. And make sure you check out all of our reviews as well as subscribing to the YouTube channel at Hope 103.2 to continue to see the watch list. Thanks again. And we look forward to seeing you at the movies.